Hi, I'm Coach Johnson from Southern Adventist University, Jim Masters. This is Jake and Mariana. They're gonna be helping us show you how to do some pairs moves. We're gonna start off with prepping for 180s, okay? So if you're starting to learn a 180, you gotta make sure that you start from the beginning and learn it the correct way. You gotta get reps in. So let's start off with the positioning for this. We'll have you guys turn sideways. You'll notice as Mariana, she has the hands on the shoulders. Jake has her nice and close with the foot. His job is to take her directly above him, using his legs to explode. We're gonna start off by doing a timer first. So have a third person come behind, and he's gonna take her up, and I'll catch her waist on the way down. So this would be considered a timer for a 180. Your call. Once I know that he's high enough, then we're gonna have him practice the actual twist. But I wanna make sure she's safe, so as she twists, I'm gonna follow her around and then catch her shins just to make sure she doesn't fall forward. So we'll still do it from the side. I'm gonna follow her around as she goes. All right, and then go ahead and dismount. And then here's our dismount right off the front. One thing I wanna say about the dismount, go ahead and grab her waist. He's gonna grab her waist, she'll grab the wrist. This is her brakes, this is her brakes, and this is his brakes. Catch high, make sure that you catch high. All right, now we're gonna have them demonstrate a 180 without help. You guys can do it facing them. They can see the spin then. Notice how Jake sinks with his legs. Make sure you do that. Here's a dismount. Good, that's a 180. You need to follow the progressions. Don't try to rush. Make sure you follow all the progressions. You get in a bunch of reps with this, you'll start noticing you're going higher and higher and higher. But make sure when the guy goes down and he takes the girl up, don't stop here. Go higher than your shoulders before you make the turn. All right, now let's go to the next step, which is gonna be toss the hands. These are more difficult. All guys, and especially in high school, they wanna be able to throw a girl as high as they possibly can and catch her feet. Toss the hands. We gotta go through progressions. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna turn sideways, and we're just gonna go over the hand demonstration so they can see. Jake's job is to make sure that he has his waist. He's gonna step this foot in right here, nice and close to the top. Then he's gonna explode with his legs, and as he lifts the girl, he wants to keep her as close as he can to him. He's gonna do a timer, which is gonna be, he's gonna throw up in the air, and then he's just gonna catch her again. I'm looking as a third to see how high her feet get according to his chest. Okay, so go in a timer. Obviously, Jake throws really high, so don't discourage you high school guys. Okay, you're not gonna throw your girl probably that high, but the key is, when he throws her up, are her feet higher than his chest? Because if it is, when he releases, he's trying to catch her feet, all right? So for the first time we've tried this, I'm gonna spot it because it, when a guy first learns this, if he tries to like throw it and then catch her feet quick, sometimes he clips her feet and it throws her forward. So in this toss the hands, I'm gonna be in front of her just in case that she is gonna, if she were to fall. She's not, but just in case. All right, so face, go and face them. So you are catching this. I'm just being the spot even though I don't need to. All right, and then the dismount. All right, now let's have them do it without any help. Obviously they're ready for this, so let's have them try just to toss to hands. Watch how Jake releases high before he looks to catch her feet. He has to release high. And there you have, that's a toss to hands. So you've seen 180s, you've seen toss to hands, the progressions to get into it, how to safely spot it, put in a lot of work. It may take you 300 of those to get it. But over time, you'll notice guys, you're gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. And the girl, one thing I didn't speak of, when the girl gets tossed, as the guy releases, the girl's hands pushes down her hips here. Okay, she's gotta throw the guy's hands right there. Her hands should be here. Thanks for watching, we hope that you guys uh, progress and let us know how you're doing. Hey guys, my name is Sam. Uh, this is my second year here on the team, and today I'm gonna to talk about prayer. So, uh, I'm a big Tennessee Titans fan. Football, if you don't know, and that, if you know anything about football, me being a Titans fan means that I grew up with a lot of disappointment. 
all right? We lost all the time when I was a kid. We would get like two wins, four wins, maybe six wins if we were lucky, if it were a good season. We never made the playoffs. We were never any good, but I was a loyal fan, all right? So I, my dad would get frustrated when we were losing these games and he would like leave the room and be like, ah, oh, I can't watch this anymore. But no, I was a true fan. I would watch to the bitter end of a 30 point loss, all right? So it'd be like 35 to two. Two points is really hard to get in football, but let's just go with that. And so, um, and it was a very disappointing sport to watch for me for a long time. I got very, very used to disappointment. But uh, one year, one specific game, I don't remember what game it was or, or if we won or not, but I remember during one game, I, we really, really needed an interception to just have a shot at winning, right? So just in desperation in my head, I prayed. I was like, God, we really need an interception. And I never like prayed for a football game before. That, I thought that was kind of dumb. Like why would God care, right? I mean, it's just football. It's not that big of a deal. And even if he did care, there's probably someone praying for the other team. So the prayers would like cancel out or something. I don't know. But in desperation, I, I prayed that prayer in my head. And on the very next play, I kid you not, we got an interception. Now, I don't remember if we won the game or not, but that moment sparked something in me that made me think, well, maybe God does care, all right? So, like, from then on, I started praying for every football game. I started praying for every Titans game. And we started, like, winning more consistently all of a sudden. And uh, I, then I, I started praying, like, before every drive. And then before every play, kind of. and and. I was just in my head, uh, I wasn't making a big deal out of it, but I was just praying for every game. And I don't know if, if for you guys who watch football, for like the past five or six seasons, which coincidentally is when I started praying, uh, the Titans have actually been pretty decent, if not good, right? So what, so what have I learned from this? I don't think God really cares about football. I think he cares about the people who are involved in football. He cares about the players, he cares about the fans, and how he can use football, even though it's just a stupid game that doesn't mean anything, I think he can use that sport or any other sport, including gymnastics, to reach people. And for me specifically, he used football to strengthen my faith in prayer. And if it weren't for all those moments that I had with God and prayer with football, which means very little, but those were like stepping stones to trusting God and trusting prayer with bigger things. And it really grew my faith in prayer. So I just wanna encourage you guys that even when something seems small in the large scheme of things, or even if you think God doesn't care about something, pray about it anyway, because God can use pretty much anything uh, to help you out in your life. So thank you for watching this week, guys. Tune in next week for another special video.